Hey, what's going on everyone? Dave Hunt here from Crossrope, and I'm really excited to bring you the first video in a tutorial series. So one of the most satisfying things about learning jump rope is mastering the different skills that are really going to enhance your workouts and give you more benefits. Now today, we're gonna get started with the basic jump, and I'm gonna give you a detailed overview of each of the different technical aspects to help you build an amazing platform to maximize your jump rope training. Let's get started. Okay, so the basic jump, we wanna focus on upper body and lower body technique aspects. So to get into the proper positioning, Make sure that your feet are together. When your feet are together, it allows the greatest room for the arc to pass beneath your feet as opposed to having them wide where the rope can actually get caught up on the outside of your foot. So put your feet together, slight knee bend, and then just start lightly bouncing up and down before you even get off the ground. You're gonna be bounding on the midsole of your foot, so you're not gonna be all the way up in your toes, and you shouldn't be heavy on your heels, just the mid part of your foot, a nice, easy bound. Now let's start out with a rope. Nice and slow at first. So it's nice and easy. I don't have a lot of excess knee flexion. I'm not picking my feet really high up off the ground because that's gonna cause a greater likelihood of injury to the soft tissue in your knees or in your ankles. So that's the bound, slow, controlled, and rhythmic. Now, once you've got the bound down, I want you to consider your arm positioning. And it's very important that you start with a proper grip. And if you're using a heavy rope, you want to have your thumbs wrapped all the way around. If you're using a lighter rope, it's fine to what's, have, uh, what's called a flared grip, where your thumb is out and your wrists are in a more relaxed and loose position. Now I'm jumping with a heavy rope today, so I'm going to wrap my hands around. I'm going to position them within 6 to 12 inches of my hips. And you can see from a side profile here, my elbows are tucked back, my shoulder blades are back, and my hands are in line with the plane of my body. They're not out here, and they're not behind my body. And it's very common for beginners to put their arms out in front of their body, which causes the rope to strike the ground in front of their feet, bounce up, hit their feet, and cause those frustrating misses. You can see when I'm jumping, my arms are relaxed. I still got that nice bound. My wrists are six to 12 inches at hip height. And they're in line with the plane of my body. So two final things. The first one is the method by which the rope is rotated. And it's very common for new jumpers to feel that they need to use a lot of arm movement in order to get that rope rotating around. So they're rotating from their shoulders or from their elbows. And what you wanna do is relax your shoulders and your elbows so that they act as a counterbalance for the wrist rotation that's gonna be the primary way that you're generating the rope speed. So again, you'll notice when I'm jumping, I'm making small wrist circles. My shoulders and my elbows are relaxed. Compare that, if this is the first time you're trying the basic jump, to the normal tendency for people to move their arms around a lot. The rope goes all over the place. And it's just not a very efficient way to jump. You're gonna have a hard time improving and learning new skills if you try to jump that way. So, We've got foot position, arm positioning, wrist rotation. 
one of the most neglected technique tips that beginners are given is what's called arm symmetry. So what that means is when you're jumping, your wrists and the point from which the rope is rotating should be the same on both sides. Now, it's normal for people to have a strong side and a weak side, and that often changes the position of where they're holding that rope. So an asymmetric jump might have the right arm out wider than the left arm, or the left arm wider than the right, or it could even be one higher than the other, or one further out in front, or further, than, further behind than the other. What happens is that disrupts the natural symmetric arc of the rope. So as I'm jumping here, if I've got one of my arms out to the side, you can see the rope arc starts to move to the right side and it's going to hit my left foot. On the other side, the rope arc gets disrupted and shifts to the left. So when you're practicing the basic jump, if you can do it in front of a mirror, it's not vain. It's just going to help you coach yourself to practice the right techniques and make sure that that rope arc is passing symmetrically above your head and below your feet. Now, if you're having a hard time getting the rhythm down on the basic jump, I would encourage you to consider using a heavier rope. This is a one pound rope. A heavy rope makes it much easier to feel where the rope is relative to your body and to really master rope control. And rope control is the key to everything. So you have to start with the basic jump, nice easy bound, hands in the right position, rotate with your wrists, relax, make sure your arms are symmetric, and slow it down to develop that rhythm until you're comfortable. And that will set an excellent platform upon which to learn the rest of the jump rope skills.